What's going on, y'all? I am joined by Olivia Gobert-Hicks, one of the foremost Commander Magic the Gathering content creators in the world, a member of the Commander Rules Committee, and I think the reason I specifically wanted to have a Commander player play Guess the Cards, it's twofold. One, I'm not even sure Olivia knows the name of the game that we're playing right now, which is always like way more fun for me if they have absolutely no idea what this game is, how it works. Just That's, that's really a big appeal for me when it comes to guests on this show. The second is, there's a recent statement by Glenn Jones, one of the developers of Marvel Snap, that Marvel Snap is more about building your own sandcastle than it is about kicking down your opponent's sandcastle. And I think a lot of the guests we have on here come from card games where dominant strategies are kicking down your opponent's sandcastle. And I think a commander player will have a sort of different perspective on that in such a way that I, I I think I will find enlightening and I hope you will find enlightening. Obviously, you know, I'm recording this video before, like I'm recording this intro before the video starts. Maybe it's not enlightening at all. Maybe we just like suck it up the whole time. I don't actually know, but I am, I am hopeful that this kind of perspective is useful in the context of the game Marvel Snap seems to be trying to be, where it's aiming for this, you know, relatively more casual audience that maybe there are more things in common with Commander than there are with, say, competitive, you know, 60-card magic. Olivia, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Okay. This will be, this will be wild. <laughs> okay, so the, I guess first question, do you actually know the name of the game? This looks like Please Marvel no? Snap. Okay, that is, that is correct. Unfortunately, she does know the name of the game, which means I get to have like 10% less fun. Have you ever played it before? Never once. I have watched other people play it be like, what is this? and walk away mm -hmm. um so brian kibler my partner yes. as you know has played it and i believe you two played magic together for a thing or you played snap together for a thing we were in like the same like tournament a tournament time, okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but like we didn't like play together or anything right like that. We we're just in the same event yes okay so it's funny that you mentioned yeah i do know about marvel snap also because ben brode one of the you know right big deal guys for this uh, has been on my commander show and we like to harass each other about mechanics and game rules for commander. And uh, I find it hilarious that you mentioned Glenn Jones, who is also a designer at wizards of the coast and works on commander. Stuff. Yes. So yes, I feel like I have an idea on how those two might think at least a little bit. So this will, right. this will be fun. <laughs> right. This is, this is basically exactly perfect. Right? Cause like, as far as I'm aware and I like, I'm not an expert on the internal workings of second dinner, but Glenn is like the balance point man. Like in his role at Second Dinner, he's like the balance guy, which makes you laugh, presumably thinking about the one ring, I guess. I don't actually me, it know. It makes me laugh very much thinking about Commander because it's like there's an era of things where we're like, hmm, was this Glenn Jones? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're starting it off with some Glenn Jones slander. Let's jump into like the basic, you know, it's the not vanilla. Slander. It's playful affection. <laughs> slander. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna jump into the vanilla curve here, okay. just so you get like a basic understanding of like what the vanilla stats in Marvel Snap are. It's sure. not like the world's most helpful thing, but I'm not the world's most helpful guy. Right. I'm also gonna explain the basics of the game as it is. Right. So Marvel Snap is a game that has six turn time limit. Okay. You can only play for six turns. At the end of six turns, there are three locations. Whoever is winning those locations, two out of three, wins the game. So like. There are three like things lanes. each player can put stuff in a spot. Correct. Okay, okay. So there's three, like, different battles happening. All right, got it. Yeah. And you have four spots at each location okay. and six turns on which to fill them up. Okay. You don't have to fill them up. There's no, like, benefit from filling them up specifically, but, like, you can if you want. Um, The goal is to get the most points on two out of three locations. So you look at Misty Knight here. Okay. The, the, the blue is her energy cost. And the orange is her power. So you play her at a location for one, and she has two power. Pretty, pretty straightforward. That's a one, two. Okay. And so Marvel Snap sort of scales up in that way. So, you know, you pay one energy, you get two power, you put that on one location. Uh, then, like, the next turn, you pay two energy, you get three power, you, you put that on another location. And that's sort of the dynamic of the game. Okay. You gain one energy per turn, uh, much like, you know, so you Hearthstone. start at one, go to six. Correct. Okay. 
and that's actually pretty much the entire game. One of the things that is pretty clear about Marvel Snap is very simple, right? You literally are just trying to get the most points on two out of three locations. Okay. The only additional wrinkle is the snap mechanic. Okay. So what's the snap mechanic? You can double the stakes when you're winning. Or when you're losing and you think you're going to win. Does that So like if does that shorten the game? Or does it nope. say like I'm I'm snapping now cuz I think I can win four turns from now? Yes. Oh. So at any point you can snap or retreat. So if you snap, you double the stakes. If your opponent snaps, you're like, oh, I can't beat whatever it is they're going to do. You leave. You can just bail. You okay. leave for one, okay. right? But that is still a loss. Right. Basically, the, the stakes go from, you know, you, they start at one cube. They go to two cubes. Uh, stakes double on the final turn, sort of like a showdown okay. is sort of how it's referred to. Uh, when you win a game on the final turn, it is two cubes. Okay. When you have snapped, it is four. When okay. both players have snapped, it is eight. Okay. So you can get really big wins. Like winning an eight cube game is kind of like winning, you know, eight to eight games when you when you get those stakes doubled. Okay. Is there anything you need to ask me now before we jump into it? Because I feel like I did a pretty half-assed explanation right there. I mean, meatloaf sandwich in your chat mentioned snap is like going all in on poker. Okay, I can... I. Can file it's not way. like going all in because you can snap and then if they snap back, you can still leave. True. Right. Like you're not locked in there. Okay, it's like okay. raising. But it just yeah. be like as, as much as you think. All right. Yeah. I, I think I got this. I mean, no, like the point is that I don't know what I'm doing and I'm trying to guess. Right? People get mad at me if I don't properly explain the rules. OK, <laughs> they actually they light me up in the comments. It happens. I, I don't need rules where I'm going. <laughs> Okay, let's do it. That's a weird if sentence for a member of the Commander's questions. Rules Committee to say, but okay, no rules. Cool, Listen, we're learning one the, things. One of the primary like rules and, and conceits of Commander is that we really help formulate the experience for new pods as they're coming in fresh that everybody has common ground. But it's a longstanding thing that like once you're in an established play group, you're not necessarily like... There's no enforcement that you play exactly as we have it listed out on the website. Right. Between Within a group, you guys can decide, you know, maybe we want to play with this modification or we are personally in our group banning this. So yes and no. Like, we we have that whole caveat of it's also choose your own adventure. So yeah, this is I think a little a more strict, I feel. Uh, I think a lot of Snap players wish they could do that. Like majority vote ban yeah. certain cards. <laughs> There's, that's, a, that's a thing that de people definitely want. Anyway, let's uh let's just finish the 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 vanillas real quick. Sure. It's uh it's the one two, okay, a two three, a three four, mm -hmm. a four six, a five nine, a six twelve, and you know I'm saying it like that because I have a magic background, but it's six energy twelve power. Right. It's so you like, you you yeah. pay six to put in, you get twelve power on the spot that you yeah. Allocated. Those are the vanilla. Got it. So now you have like a basic scale by which to evaluate all the cards that I have specifically picked to trick you, given that I know you're getting this basic scale. Except so, for this part, because it says locations with three Avengers have plus three power, which is more than vanilla, because that means there's a secondary ability outside. They're of running power. an event right oh, now. Okay. It's like a weekly thing. So this guy who normally has no abilities has the Avengers text. They're doing like a thing. Okay. Normally he has no abilities. Just ignore okay. That. Okay. They're okay. Doing, they're so doing this is thing. all right. All right. <laughs> Pay no yeah, money. It's, it's not real. <laughs> it won't be real in like a week. It's just <laughs> fake. It's not real. Like maybe even by the time this comes out, it won't be real. Fair. Okay. So I'll, <laughs> like, I'll pretend just, that's not there. <laughs> it's incredibly fake. If you see that text on it anything anything avx anything, any card okay, i show AVX you is a no ignore it okay it's not real okay fake i didn't even know they were doing this 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 came out at like 1 30. this has been in the game for like 11 hours i, I had wrote no myself idea a note happen. avx equals fake <laughs> so now i know that that's okay. not real does it also help that i have a uh, surface level at best knowledge of marvel anything <laughs> Actually, that doesn't change anything. No, I like, just mean like most of these aren't going to mean anything to me. <laughs> none of them mean anything to me okay. either. <laughs> like, I, I learn about <laughs> cards in Marvel through this game. Like, I didn't know. Here's one. Right. Black Swan. Okay. I had no idea who she was until the game. This is Black Swan. Costs three, has five power. Okay. On reveal ability, meaning ETB. Okay. Until the end of next turn, your one cost cards cost zero. So that's the turn that 
she's put down and the turn following? No, just the turn following. Just, oh. I okay. mean, like, it would be on, like, it technically would happen on the turn, you're, but you wouldn't be able to play it for zero, right? Because things happen simultaneously, right? If you're playing this and some ones, you're playing this and some oh, ones. Oh, so it happens all simultaneously. I probably should have explained that. Yes. <laughs> okay. So Turns those... happen simultaneously. Your opponent and you are playing at the same time. And you're so, playing everything at once. There's no stack. Correct. Okay. Okay. There's yeah, no, right, this right. is not like I play this and then combo that off. That now makes sense. Like it would that be now makes magic. sense that it's there next turn. It is. Yes. Ha -ha. This, next this would be, this would be very broken in Magic the Gathering. Correct. <laughs> like, oh, yes. a whole extra turn. Um, yeah, ridiculous. So. This has got to come later in the game. Well, at least at the midway point, because you can't pay for it otherwise, to the best of my knowledge. I mean, that seems playable, I guess. It's going to be playable. It's going to give you a discount like. Right. And if you have so, one power cards or one cost cards that have good stuff and then you could stack things. I mm, Mid. Yeah, that's basically right. Okay. Like it's uh like this is this is a card that is, I think, good enough to get people to want to play it, but not good enough to reward them fully for it. Yeah. And so Ailey's yeah, 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 Ailey, yeah. Ailey's right. What am I are we thumbs up, thumbs down, or uh, it's a card? You can do thumbs up, thumbs down, printed. thumbs mid. Printed. There's no rule. Okay. There's no rules. Like whatever, like I feel like the more I limit your expression of how good you think the card is the more I sort of force you to express yourself in certain ways. So I'm happy to hear an answer where it's like mid. Okay. That makes sense. You're mid. allowed to say mid. mid. That's fine. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, I think Black Swan might be a little worse than mid, but okay. she's played at a rate that I think is accurately described as mid, where okay. it's like the issue this card has is that there aren't a lot of great ones in the game. Got it. And so discounting them to zero, it's like, okay, that's cool. But the deck building cost of, I realized I should have covered this too. You only have 12 cards in your deck. Right. There's only 12 places, right? Yes. But you get, yeah. So like you get one copy of each, okay. right? Like that it's, it's Highlander, but 12 cards, right? But this is, this is a card that comes with a lot of like inbuilt deck building costs, despite being like above rate on curve. She is a card that requires you to play a lot of ones. Ones are not very good. We saw like you get like a one, two, right? You're using a whole card for two power. Right. Where like someone else using a whole card for nine power at five, it doesn't really make up for that. Basically, got it. Okay, AVX. ignore the AVX. I know AVX is ignore it. Not real. Captain America. Ongoing. Your other cards here have plus one power. Ongoing is just an ability that happens. Right. It is. It, it is, does what it says. It's static. Um, yep. and AVX is a lie. So other cards Correct. here have one power. <clears throat> Um, and by here, they mean in that zone. Yes, in that Not location. your entire so board, like, just that location. Okay. Just that location. Mid except certain strategies? Because he's only a 3-3, three, three, and it's, it's, it's three power, three energy, or three power, three, three energy, three power. And it's other cards, so he doesn't get the benefit. And you'd have to Correct. put other hosses in there to make it make sense i guess yeah this doesn't seem super great yeah I, mid is actually definitely overstating it here this card is actively bad. actively, actively so th okay, this great. is a card that is so bad that people routinely get mad that it is captain america like people are like routinely <laughs> okay. frustrated with the fact that captain america it's sucks like, so hard absolute <laughs> like, garbage it's like absolutely <laughs> terrible he shouldn't this have his normal like, shield it should be a trash can lid or something like the whole card, okay. like not just the shield should be a trash it's can, his glove should be a trash can, his mask should, should be a trash can. This should actually be Oscar the Grouch is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Except I, Oscar's a more in, well, so. No, Oscar the Grouch would not have trash an ability can helping would be others. generous. Okay, Chad, I got you. <laughs> it's it's not, yeah, this does it's not, not seem... a great card. Okay, okay, okay. I'm getting, so, hearing that that was the spot on thing that I had at first, I was like, I mean... No, it's bad. Okay. It was, I all got right, a question. Right. Did the fact that it was Captain America make you think that it had to be better? It made me surprised that it was so, such a tame ability. Because, like, you would think. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. And I honestly, the thing that got me was that it was equal power for uh, cost. Like, 
isn't he supposed to be like a real American hero? Like we underpay all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's uh he's like probably the number one complaint people have about the new player experience is that like some of the I got Captain like, America profile. garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yes, like some of the some of the really high profile heroes are just like totally unplayable as soon as you're like two weeks into the game. And this is the kind of guy that they're talking about. When OK, happens. got it. All right. I'm getting better already. I'm, I'm improving every time. But that being said, great job, Ryan's that were the artists, Ryan Benjamin and Ryan. Kinnick. The Adrian. art in this game is nuts. I actually specifically picked the most similar art so that you wouldn't be able to get any like special knowledge out of like whether I have cool art on here. Word, okay. But there is well, don't, really aren't they cool like stuff. just collected anyway or are they like specifically one or like accumulated? Does that make a difference? No, not really. I mean, the, the cards are all specifically collected. The variants are usually purchased. Okay. And so since you'd be buying the variants, it's probably for cards that you actually want to play. Understood, okay. Right. I mean, <laughs> you'd be surprised at how little purchase discipline I have. <laughs> I wouldn't. Actually, I live with Ryan Kibler. I would not be surprised. Okay, fair enough. Maybe he, it's just he, no, he, he did the same thing that every Snap player wants to do to Ben Brode and be like, why did I spend money and not have all the things? So. <laughs> that's literally, that's exactly how they decided. It was like, you literally cannot spend money to have all the things. And it was like, why would you not want me to do that? <laughs> like, just, isn't that? Isn't that the point? Yeah, I have given you fiat currency. Now you give me animations for a game. Thank you. <laughs> so this is this is uh, Patriot. OK, uh, three, one. Ongoing your cards with no abilities have plus two, power. which makes Patriot a three, three as well. No, he has an ability. The ongoing is oh, the ongoing is duh. OK. So like the, the cards with no abilities are like the vanilla ones we showed you earlier. Right. For scale, but right? there are some huge ones. So that <laughs> could be cool and beneficial. This seems very strategy dependent to me. Because three for one. And you have to like. Be very judicious in selecting cards that don't have abilities that are still going to get a reasonable benefit out of this and be worth it. Mid in most scenarios. Correct. This is a build around. Okay. Like this is, this is uh ye old build around chat. I see you saying tokens, cut it out. Stop, stop giving, stop giving the answers. <laughs> Cause yes, this is a token card. Okay. Uh, This is a card that like, you know, when you like, you create a copy of something, you can play it in token strategies. This is your glorious anthem. Got right? it. Like right. that's yeah. kind of what this guy, this guy is. He's uh only good in that specific strategy. And that specific strategy sort of waxes and wanes with the metagame. Okay. It's it's been a while since this guy was in like a really top tier deck, but it is a a a, a solid strategy that people can play. I think I would describe him as above mid just because being solid is so valuable in this game when you're like building your collection. Yeah, again, like but... it's one of those things that uh, like there's plenty of stuff in Magic 2 that's like fine and good in very select scenarios. It absolutely just hoses the opposition. Like there are definitely things you build around. So that's that, that's what this feels like. So like in selected applications, probably super busted in one that maybe you didn't select for it dead card yeah he's absolutely unplayable unless you build around okay him. and when you do build around him i wouldn't say he's absolutely busted he's just good but solid that is worth Dependable. doing it's, yeah, yeah he's like a solid, yeah worth doing yes, yeah exactly good. okay cool. yes but not like elite okay proxima uh, midnight you. four seven when it's discarded jumps to your lowest power location that isn't full so you discard in this you can discard in this game yeah uh like it's like a thing you have to do. Like there's no discard step or anything. Just like a card will have, you know, discard a card on it. Oh, okay. I mean, that seems like if it's discarded, that means you get it to jump out for free because then you're not paying the cost for it, right? Mm -hmm. So to have something get discarded and give seven power and you didn't, or seven power and you didn't pay any costs seems good. But again, you need to have something that discards it. So good situational or overall better than mid yeah this card's amazing okay like th this card this card has th i'm gonna say this is gonna be a confusing sentence because i'm saying a lot of 
discard and this card. Okay. Try to enunciate it discard. properly. Discard as a deck has been wildly mid for okay. the entire time Marvel Snap has existed. Until she came Except, along. Except literally, yes. Got it. Like she came out and it's like suddenly this deck is getting so much free power. Yeah, that seems that bananas. It just, yeah. The yeah, no, it's a free, again not it's knowing a zero seven. Yeah, not knowing yeah. what the meta is and like if discards a frequent yes. thing, like it seems like super good if you mm -hmm. are prepared for that. So knowing discards a thing, well, yeah, she's that's that's baller. She's the reason it is. Got like it. discard was very mid until she came out, and she came out like a few weeks ago, oh, and okay. since then it has been like top tier deck, elite deck, one of the best in the game at at every point since she came out, Discard has been like one of the five best decks in the game. And it is entirely because of her. Okay, sick. Yeah, that totally makes sense reading this. Because like, you just, it's free. And you probably have something else yeah. that's making you discard that is a, a feature, not a bug. So yep. that's, just, that's just value. Yeah, she's literally just free. Like, Chad is reminding me that I should let you know that lanes have different like randomly generated text oh, on them zones. basically. Yeah, like okay. the zones. They have like abilities. I don't actually know how much it matters for evaluating the cards, but like, you know, like I, I kind of don't think it does. Got it. <laughs> but it'll be like, uh, you know, a, a, a location that says like, you know, uh, you can't play anything here after turn four or, you know, a location that says cards here get plus one power. Just they do they do stuff. OK, so that's all right. So one of your chat was mentioning the not being able to access. Yeah. So then she would be super busted because if you got locked out after turn four, that's your lowest power location. Suddenly you just got seven yep. free power there. Yeah, word. OK. Yeah, there's also like locations where you cannot play cards. Ah. And so, yeah, she gives you just she seven just jumps there. there. She doesn't get played. Yes. She just goes. Love it. Goes. Love there. that. For Absolutely. Her. We love you, Proxima. Oh. Good job. I don't know if we do. Uh, apparently she's like a pretty bad person i like she, we're talking I, I about watched... superheroes they all are to some degree no she like works for thanos like she's she's like she's bad like <laughs> she's a bad person all i've seen is endgame i don't i don't know howard the duck one two yes he looks like that ongoing you can tap this to see the top card of your deck does he, remember does he have a superpower in like the game or in like real like the comics? Yes. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I asked that. I set myself up for like not knowing the answer to either. <laughs> like, no, I, he's a duck that is a detective. Okay. I think. Sure. Sounds great. Yeah. Uh, since you only have twelve cards and six turns, it feels like knowing what's on top of your draw pile is good um because then you can know what the hell you're going to do with your next card and think a little bit more i mean i don't know oh i don't know i'm gonna push you into a thumbs up or thumbs down on this one we've been getting too much mid thumbs up yeah unfortunately no, the answer okay. is thumbs down <laughs> No, oh, this guy's terrible. This guy is awful. I don't. I don't uh, even know. I didn't even know you could tap in Marble Snap. He's the only card that you can. Oh well, what's the, what is happening? They literally do? invented they they invented this mechanic so that you could use Howard to see the top card. Of I your hate card. it. Pass. No, I'm rescinding. That's. I already told you that the you can't rescind. I can rescind my judgment now. I have more information. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same card. Yeah, but no, now that I know that a... the mechanics around it. Oh, oh wait, wait you may. Oh, wait. no, I realized what happened. You meant tap, like tap. Yeah. No, you're like you, you poke him. You tap him. There's oh, no my tapping. God, get out of here. That's so stupid. <laughs> Pass. Next card. Next card. <laughs> I am disappointed. I'm howling. No, there's there's no you don't have there's no like binary choices or anything, right? Like it's just stuff happens. You there's no spoken? there's no what ability. The hell? I'm texting Ben right now. Tell him I am. Mad no, about I'm Howard literally the gonna duck. take a picture of this. What you actually poke the duck? What's wrong with you? I'm doing it. <laughs> and he says commander damage isn't real. His game's not real. Oh my god, Ben bro. <laughs> In all caps. Wait, this means you just poke the animal? Yeah. 
That is that is exactly I'm what it means. I'm so disappointed in him. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> I'm never listening to you about game design again. <laughs> Man, you're really speaking the truth of many Marvel Snap gamers right now. They, they wish they could do a personal what you're doing friend. right now. Yeah, they, they are, they are, they, they like. There's a bunch of people in chat that are like, "God, I wish that was me right now." Okay, <laughs> he's fine, everybody. He'll be okay. I'm doing your work for you, and he can't get mad at you because I'm the one doing it. <laughs> God, <laughs> time for Snap hot right. takes. Hmm. I, I would you believe I actually do that series? I literally do that as a series. That's not even a joke. I have a hot take series. I copied it from Anthony Fantano, where he did the let's argue thing. That's not even one hundred percent factual. Martyr, one five. At the end of the game, move to a location that loses you the game. Like to just a bad spot, or you lose when it happens. I'm not uh, allowed to ask she questions. She tries to I? make you lose the entire game. Oh, why would you play her? Because she's a one five, which is like two and wow. a half times the average one stat. Well, then I guess you're just smarter than the card, right? Because it does say if possible. So that means that you'd have to have your other lanes full. So Correct. it can't move in. It can't move in there. Or. All of your lanes are at an amount that's insurmountable as to make them impossible for you to lose. Yes. But it does get play because the value. I didn't say that. It would be played because of the value. It is bigger than pretty much every other one drop except maybe one. Yeah. I think she's good. Nope. Nope. <laughs> she, she's the... Uh... So the issue this card has is locations mess you up enough such that, yeah, you can fill up your, your board most games. Actually, you know what? Mm, I'm, I'm kind of torn because I think she's, like, borderline playable right now. Okay. I think she's, like, borderline playable. And in previous iterations, it's like, we're, we're putting Martyr on here to trick people. But, like, honest to God, I think you could try to play it. Like, she is... Not a card I would recommend you play, but right now a deck that she's in is closer to being playable than it basically ever has been. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. But typically it's like this is the worst card in the game. This feels Currently, like Currently she's like mildly this, like This feels like a card time. where if you know what you're doing, you can be sneaky and figure out a place for this. If you're new, you're going to look at this and your snap judgment of that's terrible is correct. Correct, actually. Yeah, okay. like in that sense, she's probably pretty well designed because anyone who looks at her and is like, well, that's terrible. I'm not spending my money on that. And then like if you pick her up later on down the line, like sort of, you know, like free roll her or whatever, you can try to find a way to use her. It's just she's never worth purchasing. There right? it is. Yeah. Like, uh, chat just said uh, the problems that in a 12 card deck, it's a waste of a slot most of the time. Yeah. That, like you can play her like. in in like a one drop heavy zoo deck, okay. which has basically never been good, but right now is about as good as it's ever been. You can put her in there. She's probably like the second best option for like the, the 12th card okay. in the deck, but that's better than what she was, which was like absolutely unplayable. I put her on here entirely to try to trick someone into saying that she's good. <laughs> that's, well, mission accomplished. That's what she I did. Sure. I did say she that. She also got better. Fair. She also got better. Like you, okay. you, I feel like you got lucky on the timing. Because, like, if we did this, like, three days ago, if this would have been, like, and you'd said the same answer, I would have been like, no, this card's terrible. Word. But now okay. it's like, I don't know. Because sometimes, I mean, that's the thing in Commander, right? You take bad cards and all of a sudden, like, on their face, mm -hmm. dog shit. And then when you play them with the right circumstances and the right pieces around them, actually kind of kind of tight. So I can see someone forcing this and maybe making it work more than expected, but less than they want. <laughs> That is almost exactly correct. Those, those, that turn of phrase is exactly what I would okay. use for it. Yes. Meet Shang-Chi. Ignore the ADX. I know. I, I... Okay. You got the, you got the I got the note. Fake. Yeah. You got the note. I got all the right. note. I'm going to put it right here. Four three. APX. On reveal, destroy all enemy cards here that have 10 or more power. Remember, here is like at the location, at the location. she's played. 
and that specifies enemy cards. So you showed mm -hmm. me vanilla friends. Yes. And they were pretty still nobody had 10. They needed buffs. So you need Hulk had Hulk has 12. Hulk, Hulk was 12. That's right. So for most cards, because everything I've seen here is has been lower in power, save uh the one front. Um This see, uh, this feels like it's good in the last turn. Is that your final answer? I don't want to jump in before you're done thinking. That's all. So again, I'm not trying to fool you. No, either. no, no. It's because like, I have no context clues, right? So right. if there are lanes that say like any card play that is put face up here gets plus three, well, then that kind of changes the dynamic. Maybe all mm -hmm. of a sudden there is a lot of stuff that can easily hit that threshold and this is bananas because you've just cleared your enemy's lane they don't have cards to fill it again and you've got a roster there on the other hand if things are consistently lower power you don't have a zone that's giving you buffs or other things that are giving you buffs playing something like this might be like tight everything was nine and i just paid four for three I think I'm going to give this one to you because you correctly said this card is a turn six banger and this card is a turn six banger. Okay. Like, this is this is the <laughs> premier removal spell in Marvel. Spell. Okay. We don't actually have removal. Right. We have this. You guy. just have care. He, okay. is, he is Doomblade, right? Like dies to Shang-Chi is dies to Doomblade. Like this is the bar to reach. And so like for this reason, there's a lot of like People that'll play stuff that like are, is nine so that it specifically will not die to this guy. He is the most played card in this entire game. Okay. By far. This is the metagame defining card. He is the guy. You also get him for free. So, you know, shout out to the devs for doing that. But like this is, I think it would be very easy to say this is the best card in the game. If okay. not, maybe you're not going to say the best. This is the most metagame defining card because of the way this works. And I think this is now the time to introduce the concept of priority here. Okay. Uh, if you're winning the game, your cards reveal before your opponents. That makes if sense. If you're losing yeah. the game, your cards reveal after. Yeah. And so the way Shang-Chi tends to work is you make sure your opponent is winning the game and then you play him and blow up their big thing on turn six. And so like the simultaneous reveals means that like you're just blowing up and there's, the thing there's, they were counting there's, on. Yeah, there's no way to come back from that. There's no recovery. Right. Okay. He is he is the premier card in, in, in the form right now like it is about him <laughs> <laughs> oh chat's reminding me that he used to be better yeah he used to say nine or more which oh is god that funny. probably like, see that feels way more <laughs> heater compared to what we just saw oh my god i got a tap <laughs> i got a text back from ben okay that is ha 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 i didn't even think of the double meaning of the word tap there ha 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 all caps that doesn't answer my fucking question ben I also like that, that that kills me though, because I put this card on here and I did not think of the double meaning. <laughs> I'm doing a guess that this card is good. <laughs> and made a fool of myself. No, I mean that is sort of the premise. I know. I'm fine with it. Thankfully, I do that all the time in my normal J job and my normal card <laughs> in my normal TCG, I'm also a fucking idiot. So yeah. I should ask, is it okay to cuss? <laughs> As I've dropped. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, extremely. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say I made a damn fool of myself. <laughs> How could you? I'm leaving all of this in. Oh, the saga of, of the Ben Brode text chain is going on YouTube <laughs> at some point. It's happening. All right. So Jeff right. is up now. Jeff. He's... Yes. A Jeff exclamation point. Oh, Jeff. Important. Have, yeah, you Jeff. Have you seen the Jeff pretty weird little like vine clip thing? No. I, I am. I'm I will send it to you after this chat. You should man. look it up. Um, there is a little 10 second clip called Jeopardy. And it is a little segment, like one question, two questions from Jeopardy. But every word that is uttered is Jeff. And they splice it all together from Jeopardy. <laughs> okay. And for there's somebody who had an exclamation point on the Jeff. And it reminded me, Jeff. It's just Jeff. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I'm old and it's deep internet. Anyway. Uh, you can move this once. Nothing can stop you from moving or playing this to any location. Nothing. Yeah, it's a little bit misleading because, like, you can't put it as, like, a fifth card on a location. But basically but anything if it, else. But if not. a location says you can't play things here, Jeff says go to hell, I'm going here. Yes. Okay. Correct. 
which could be useful. So it could. being able to evade the restrictions placed on you has merit. It does not issue a ton of power, but it also gives you more than you're paying out for it. Um, 2-3 is the vanilla stat. 2-3 is vanilla. Okay, so that's our... that's So 2-3 is a bear here. Uh, mm -hmm. So... Are there things like zones having uh, plus to power can't have stuff played after a certain turn? Or do they generally only have like one ability... They First usually zone. have one thing. Okay. It's just like this is the, the one thing that the zone does. I don't think they like to introduce complexity on that level. Jeff feels like special use case excellent. But again, this, uh, I don't know because I don't know how frequent or like what kind of meta or how often you might see go to hell you can't do x thing here where his being able to ignore that is incredibly useful but it is one of those things where like say elaine gets locked down on like a turn and nobody can play anything anymore and your opponent's beating you but you are able to play this change that and then take the lane that seems valuable and you can move it so you can move it once after being revealed so if it is in a place then you can later change it to a different place Correct. That's versatility, though. <laughs> this feels like something that nobody smart would play, but I would force. Uh, okay. You actually had it with that's versatility, though. Everyone smart plays this card. Okay. <laughs> like he is, he is like the apex. Like just every two drop gets compared to him. Oh, he is the yeah. Guy but is he is like, he as good as Jeff? Okay. Yes. Just like, because, I mean, he, like, like the, the ability to change it and make it yes. have a bigger impact where it can have a bigger impact instead of being locked into one place where maybe it lost its 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 shine is very good. And being able to ignore the restrictions except for the four in a, in a lane also seems very helpful if something gets locked down and now you have the option to turn it in your favor. That's basically correct, okay. right? Like the the I think I was gonna ask like if you if you had answered this like wildly incorrectly, I was gonna make sure you noticed the move part. Yeah. Because that is like a big part of his powers. Like being able to be played in a location and then effectively threaten being everywhere on the final turn. Right. Like your opponent is looking at that and they're like, okay, what if Jeff goes here and then they play XYZ? What if Jeff goes here yeah, and then it, they play it, XYZ? It, feels, it's a whole it thing. feels like because of that, it forces them to have to make worse decisions for themselves and play around it or what yes. you might do, even if it's not what your strategy is or it's the optimal mm -hmm. play for you. Okay. Yes, like that We're is that is basically exactly. Correct. We're getting there, chat. Eliath, on reveal, destroy all unrevealed enemy cards here. So the way Marvel Snap works, when your cards are played, they are face down. <gasps> they turn face up. That's what on reveal means. So That's you how the need ETB to be happens. on the winning side. You need to be yes. winning for this to be meaningful. Yes. Basically, he's a card that wins one lane if you are already ahead in the game. That is how he works. Interesting. So you already have to be ahead. This is obviously a last turn. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So you've got to be ahead. You've got to be on the last turn. Obviously, that's why the two power isn't as important is because the mental calculus here is that you're already winning. This is maybe a lane that you could be behind on or that you're pretty evenly matched. So whatever they're putting down, that two will send you ahead and then they lose whatever would have possibly kept them in contention for it. But it's also a six, which means it's probably the only thing you're playing that turn. Yep. I mean, you have six energy on turn six most of the time like it's below shang chi for sure I, ooh, I don't know just that situational of it you having to be in the front for it and that it costs so much that it could still be a risk because i mean like not knowing what other cards do 
Like if there is something that if the card gets destroyed, you get a benefit. Or if they're the only ones in the lane, you get a benefit. Or if it's like, uh, you know, not having any idea on what mechanics are for this. On its face, it seems like a nice little fuck you at the end of this. Like you thought you did, but you don't. And you don't get to see where people are placing or like you guys it just shows no, they, everything. they happen simultaneously okay so, so like you don't get to see they put your their cards in that specific place until you've already put this guy down okay so you have to put a card down in a spot that they could reasonably take would think that they can reasonably take wouldn't expect or want this mm -hmm. oof that makes it seem actually almost too situational to actually be good or be good in, ex again, extremely limited applications just because of how many things you have to have going for you. You have to be in front. You have to pick the right lane. Correct. I don't know. I, mm, my instinct is that this is actually something that looks way better than it is. Okay. I... I feel like this is going to make people mad. First of all, you had it right when you said this card is like a nice little fuck you card. Yeah. That is basically the exact way to describe this card. However, I agree with you. This card is overrated. Like, this is a card that a lot of people who are watching this are going to say like, no, Cam, you're wrong. It's one of the, it's a very powerful card. It's a, it's in a lot of spots. But one thing I've noticed about playing this card is that in a lot of situations, you play this card and something that was like sufficiently large would have also won the game. Like. There's this thing where it's like, it is a card that people feel has an outsized impact because of just how bad it feels. If there were counter spells in this game, Eliath would be the counter spell. We talked right. about the sandcastles, right? This is the knock down your opponent's sandcastle guy. Everyone <laughs> this is hates the, This is that little extra kick after you've already pushed him down. Yes. Like, like this is, this is the... <laughs> I'm winning this game and now I'm really winning this game. Yeah. Like this is, it's a good card, okay. but I do think it tends to get overrated in the context of like, this is a card that is currently, I would say is seeing play in the best deck in the game, Sure, but I would not say is like overly a key part of it. It just can run it. And it, the threat of it is often leveraged more than the actual card itself. Right, and it's right. just like, it's a very, it is a specifically situational card. It's just that, you know, there are a lot of decks in this game that are good at setting up that this, situation. This feels like it's also a card that, like, man, when it hits, oh, it fucking hits. And it's just like, yep. ooh, got your ass. But when it doesn't, it's just like, wow, that. Yeah. That's a card so, I played and had in my 12. Right. Like, okay. one of the most popular six drops in the game is a card that has the text of, like, it, it, it's a 6-5 that adds... Uh, five power to the loca other locations. So it's Whoa. like effectively a 6-15 split across all three. Yeah. And it's like you play you play your 6-2 and they play that and you're just like, oh my God. Because if you don't put it in the right lane, the other the power gets added anyway and you just like, you end up very sad. Got it. It's, uh, it, it's a card that I think is a little overrated right now, but I still think it would be fair to describe as quite good. Okay. Yeah, it's it seems very like you see it and you're just like, yeah, I'm going to just ruin everyone's day. And then you play it out and it's like, it doesn't, hit as much as you want it to because like yeah someone said it in chat like it yeah. feels very telegraphed or like projected yes yeah it, this is uh nothing is more I, embarrassing I than missing the alley off yeah that's what i feel like i'd be mortified when i miss the call <laughs> yes like it's it's very much like uh i think one of the things people really don't like about it is it tends to turn the game into literally just i'm coin flipping got it oh if you alive here i'm dead got if it. you alive here i win and it's like, that's the entire game. It, it, it restricts the game to being that a lot of the time. Okay. We got a weird one. This one was one we put on here specifically for you as a commander oh, player. Because it's just like, it feels like the most, wow, okay. It feels like the most commandery card in the entire game. Because it's a 6-9, living... nice. No, but nice. Uh, the Living Tribunal, ongoing ability, split your total power evenly across all locations. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird, right? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I hate this. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Because what happens if you're just deciding to, like, forego a lane as a strategy? 
yeah, you that's not what this deck does. If oh, so there is a deck Tribunal about deck. it. Okay, so you are your build. This is a build around, buddy. Yeah, it's a guy. Okay. It's a guy you build around. So he is. It's pretty hyper specific. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is very situational. So he's the last turn. He's last call. Um, split your total power evenly among all locations. IDK, man. Because I can see the merit to that, right? Like, you can just go gangbusters in one, and especially if it's got, like, a really high, like, lane bonus or some shit like that, you can kind of slow play the other two, just go go nuts on one, then drop this guy in, and all of a sudden, there you are with a high power, or at least higher power in the ones that you kind of gave up on. But if you're, ar well, actually, okay, so you arms race the hell out of one lane and maybe get your opponent to do the same. You could drop this, beat them out in the other two, but lose the original one that just now got arms raced. You could. Good. Good? I think that's a relatively fair description. This is a, a the, the deck it goes in. It's a live. It's a definitely a build around you. And it does do many of the things that you described. But fundamentally, what it's trying to do specifically is just go arbitrarily large. Okay. Like it wants to go exponential and then play this guy. OK. And that makes it like this very glass cannon. It yeah. Either yeah. Does it, the it's, thing it's, and yeah. You win really hard or it doesn't do the thing and you just die. Yeah, this win this wins real hard or you just need to get a prescription for antidepressants. Like this feels just yes. Like gut punch loss or god damn I'm good. Right. There's okay. a card that turns off ongoing abilities. Oh, right? okay. So, so that like, would everything this okay. deck does is built based around it's like you're you're doing all the thing, you're like, "Oh, I'm winning this lane, oh, I'm doing all this stuff." Oh my god, all my ongoing guys are stacking. I'm going nuts. I'm going to have like 150 power in every lane and then your deck just falls apart. Right. Yeah. And it's like it, it, there there's it's a real risk that you have. Another one of the major risks is like we just showed you Eliath, right? Right. And so it's like, "Oh, I'm hyper stacking this lane. Oh, I'm going to play this guy on the final turn of the game. Oh, never mind. They're winning the game because I'm hyper stacking this lane. Eliath kills my living tribunal and I die." Word. That's right. another thing that happens. Got there. it. Like it, this is this is a deck that like sort of sets the tone for the meta, which is to say it's been good for like literally one week. But in that one week, it was like borderline unbeatable. And then Got everyone it. was like, all right, no, we, we can't. Let no, we, yeah, 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 we can't we're let good. this happen. Yeah, we're, you, you, we're done. Where's my like, alley we're, we're done with this. Yeah. This is not happening anymore. And then it hasn't happened at that level anymore. It just sort of existed as like a uh, like a like a it, it checks for if you have the ways to interact with it. If you have the ways to interact with it, you're fine. If you don't have the ways to interact, with it's it, been fun. Thanks for playing. Much. Got it. OK, cool. It's dredge, I think, would be the analogy. OK. Yeah, it's like whatever, whatever, whatever dumb graveyard combo deck exists. Word. It's All right. Bad. Yeah. OK. Yeah, that one. Uh, ah, that was. That, I, I, I see how that could actually suck hard. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like there's not well, like games, six, games where like it's paid six for nine power got fuck all back from Ooh, it yeah i can i can non-functional yeah yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's some of that yeah <sighs> i have anxiety from this like i just don't want to be an idiot <laughs> okay well we're getting into I, I i set this one up to be like the weird ones here here's we've been here long enough here's the weird ones so this Agatha is Harkness. i'm giving up my life to chat gpt uh yes except you know it's not even chat gpt because uh, with all the faults of i'm giving this AI up technology, to glenn jones and ben brode i'm giving this up to rolling a dice she plays randomly oh oh no, this is dog shit then why would you play that oh yeah absolutely this is absolutely dog shit 100 we don't even need to talk about anything yeah no it, it really sucks this this card is one of the worst cards in the game typically has like basically the lowest win rate in the game this is Super this sucks. is the are you new you guys want to see a <laughs> I dead just body saw that blow out <laughs> i just saw that blow out the the discord volume <laughs> like right into the red sorry <laughs> no i've been peeking my mic here the whole time i think but like yes that is <laughs> Apologies to the people watching this uh, on YouTube, so I guess. Sorry. I'm sorry I'm for sorry. your speakers. 
Yeah, this feels very you kids want to see a dead body. Like yeah, it's 614, it man, and you don't read the text on the bottom, and all of a sudden yeah. the computer's making plays for you, and it's the worst game of chess yeah. of your life. One time I won three battle mode games in a row with her, and that was such an accomplishment Did that you I just made a log video off on and it. like not play for a month. No, back like to that. I put it on YouTube. Did you get I was like this has to go? Did you go buy lottery tickets? Level. Did you go to a casino? Like I <laughs> All right, Iron Lad, 4-6, on reveal, copy the text of your deck's top card. Is your deck's, so top, deck's top, 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 is your deck's top card always hidden? Unless you poke a duck. Unless you Howard the duck, yeah, yeah I suppose. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, no, it's always face Look down. at that callback. Yeah. It's always real face dead. down. So, okay, so this does two things. This lets you get six power, so you get your bonus of more power than you paid. Mm -hmm. And it telegraphs to you what's coming. If you get it, right? Like, it copies it. Right. So it's like, so if you have an saying, ability you on twice. that card. So you, you get it get twice, but you also you now it. know what's coming up. Correct. And you can strategery because of it. However. I mean, you can. It's not until reveal. So you could play yourself. I'm not sure how you mean play yourself. Because, like, when you play this guy, no, like, he shows up. Congratulations, hmm. you played yourself. As in, like, he shows up, but he doesn't copy the ability until the reveal, right? Like, you don't know what it is until it's turned face up. Yeah, but he gets turned face up when you play him. Like, that's the process of, it's an ETB. Right, right, right. I'm just saying, you can't strategize what's on right, top of yes. your deck you do not until know it actually it. Yes. gets put down. I mean, down. you know, unless you play Howard the Duck. <sighs> But we already talked about we don't play <laughs> Howard the Duck. So I'm trying I'm trying sure. to use the test to work the test. Yes. Here. No, yeah, yeah, so. yes. <laughs> that is actually that is actually how this is designed. Like they they ratchet up the more you know. Ah. And so like it's it's built on itself. That's how I got through like literally all of my schooling. And <laughs> dude, Sam, I'm so good at ruling out two answers on a multiple choice test. Especially when somewhere else on the multiple choice test, it told you what the answer was. You yes. just have to <laughs> So, okay. <sighs> I don't know. You've got to be pretty, pretty solid in what you've chosen to be inside your deck that no matter what is on top, this is going to be meaningful. So it feels like it needs a lot of ongoing effects in your deck that pretty you much any copy on reveals. OK, fair. Or any any text, any text, every yeah. text. So it feels yeah. like you want stuff that is good and impactful for you at any point, like no matter what, it's going to be a net positive for you or a net negative for your enemy. Yep. You still get six. It comes late game, not end game. I think this is good. Absolutely. 100%. Like, good. This is just a flat, good card. A, a, a tip, archetypical, archetypal, archetypal. mid range card. Yeah. I, see, it's harder than you think. <laughs> as soon as I went to confidently say it, I was like, uh, yeah. I actually don't know what to say. We're just talking about how good we are on tests. <laughs> Both failed that. All right archetypal mid-range card where it's just like this is a good guy with good stats who does good stuff because your whole deck is composed of good cards and so like you play him in your in your 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 pile of good cards and he is a good card and that is like the the exact thing that he does okay sick hobgoblin goblin five negative eight on reveal switch side oh this is bananas goes over to your opponent yeah this also feels like a pretty good fuck you it only oh, this is like kind of a sicko card. Yeah, like there, there's like a certain type of player. Yeah. Yeah, but I know we have those in magic, too, and they exist. So that means that this is played. Oh, yeah. This is definitely played. There are definitely blue black players in yeah. in Marvel Snap for sure. Every listen, we all contain multitudes. Um, mm. OK, so he's five. So he's late game. This is. This is hope beyond hope, right? Uh. So answer me this. If you have an opponent, so let's say you both have three in your lane and you decide to hobgoblin in that same lane. If they play a fourth card there at the same time, what happens? Because you just said that's the one rule that you can't break is have more than four in a location. So You're on it. You're on it. It does not go over if the lane is. Great. So then you're extra host. Yes. Oh, so you if you want to play this, you actually have to have a couple brain cells to rub together and be able to try to strategy your opponent into 
either leaving, playing into a lane that seems extra dead, like that you are playing into a lane that's extra dead, like they have one on lock basically, and that you playing into it would be foolish and you're kind of like seeding that as not happening. Or you're going to use this to either like in a two on two, basically, like try to level something out or just bring them down enough and hope that they're not playing two cards into that to let you take it, even though you're not going to have a third card in that lane or a fourth card potentially in that lane. Uh, I think you have to be smart and it's situationally good, but too risky for most people. If I had a competent editor, which I don't because I'm my own editor, this is where I would put like the sound effect of a home run being hit. Absolutely, 100% the best you've done today. That is exactly perfect. No, like I, that, that is some of the best anyone's ever done in this. Like, I've, like people have been close and far and like good on it, but like that exactly 100% perfect. Exact description of the card, exact analysis of the issues the card has, and exact description of the role it tends to play. That is like absolute home run 100%. When I first saw this card, I was like, this is the most broken card in the game. And then I went through the same thought process you did. And it was like, oh, okay. It's because like, that's fine. where I was. It's just like, okay, well, yeah, yes. obviously this is something that you fucking run. And then it's like, no, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. This card. That's exactly. You it. know what this is? This is bait. <laughs> oh, I think. That no, it has a place. Like, it has unfair? a place. It definitely has a place. But like. Yeah. The, the initial, like, gut reaction of, like, read, switch sides, minus eight, yeah. Yes. You're just like, holy shit, yeah, the it, coolest it, guy. It wants you to actually take a beat and be like, you got to make sure that there's there's a electric connection up in the old noodle, because mm -hmm. it could absolutely hose you real bad. For sure. Okay. I'm not going to be able to sleep after this. Like, I'm wired. <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I, that's the that like I I hope that everyone watching at least this far in the video this is like an hour in. I hope they're not going to be able to sleep. They're just gonna have to keep watching my content. That's really that's yeah. Really, no, don't yeah, I, listen. That's what you should do. Vibin. All right, Galactus. If you're winning this location and this is your only card here, destroy other locations. I mean, this has got the shit telegraphed out of it. You either have yes. to have something completely eradicated by an opponent, or it is damned obvious you're playing Galactus. Oh, yeah. That being said, I would <laughs> wager... Ah! I would wager there are things that destroy lanes. No, just him. Like, no, no, no. Like opposite lanes. Like, so How do you an mean? opponent could easily, like you could not be running Galactus, like the way you're playing stuff out and that an right. opponent could play something that will clear, a clear your lane. No, there's no board wipe. Okay. There's nothing that can do that. Okay. 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 Shang-Chi is our only real remove. Got it. Like it, okay. it, it's interaction on that level. We don't have Wrath of God. Okay. So there's nothing that's going to like remove if someone's got a, a stack basically like three or four in a lane. There's nothing that's going to get yeah. rid of all of those. The closest you're going to get is like, there's a card called Gambit that randomly destroys one card, but that's only there's, one. It would have to be yeah, only, only be one in that lane. It yes. would have to randomly ta ta target. That right. Okay. Like there, there, there's no, there's no like blow up everything across from me. That would be a, a, a Eliath is like, there's that's kind of why Eliath works. Cause he's the only thing that's even close to doing. That. You have to be winning that location. And that's your only mm -hmm. card there. Mm -hmm. Under what circumstances would you be winning by playing nothing? Well, we just saw Hobgoblin. True. I don't know. I feel like this is almost too, like, obvious. Like, it'd be really hard to, to be able to spring this. It's just, it's the, this is your only card here. 
which means there's a very particular, it feels like there's a very particular strategy you have to be taking in order to be able to play this out on turn six, have this be the only card in a location that you're also still somehow winning. And that's what's going to give you the game because that would, by eliminating the other two, you're winning that location. You play this, you knock out those, you're ostensibly winning this location as well and therefore the game. Correct. I don't know. This actually, to me, the way I, I would think this is a trap and that it's not going to work for me the way I want it to. And like, it's just going to be great. I have this big finisher, but I can't actually use it to finish. It's just going to be a five power for six. Yeah. A uh, second home run sound effect here. Galactus is absolutely a trap right now. Yeah. Uh, he is, he is like, you are describing the deck that plays him, right? Where it's like, you do like your hobgoblin stuff right. and then you play Galactus on that land. And you're like, I have won the game, but it's like, it's, it is it, a lot of decks in Marvel snap are pretty easy to recognize at the highest levels okay. of play, but even the low levels of play will recognize Galactus decks while they're happening. Like this is a very, it feels like, it, it feels like it's, yeah, it's just so, so like broad like it, it's just so telegraphed it's so broadcast that like this is what you're doing because you have to have such a specific condition for it to function the way you want like this is it's so narrow the application is yes. so narrow so i believe that there was an interview that ben Brode did where he said this is the card that he was the most scared of in the entire game and I don't think it's the most nerfed card in the entire game, but it's definitely the one where it's like, it feels like they have the lowest thresholds for this card ever being good. Where it's like, as soon as this becomes a card that you actually start to see on a regular basis, they're like, we have to get rid of this guy. And so he has been nerfed, I believe, three times. One time they accidentally buffed him. Uh, they don't like to talk about that one. But this this is the card where it's like, they have, this is like, I think if he ever actually was relevant, they would nuke him again. And like, they, he is like, Yes, 100 like he is a card where it's like they we can't allow this to be a real thing <clears throat> yeah it just, can exist but it can't be good i mean like it would make sense that like it destroys one other location right like you have mm -hmm. the option of like not telegraphing it so hard right like it's not mm -hmm. as obvious but like the fact that you have to have a very specific set of conditions that just makes it so clear what's going on and the application yeah. is so narrow and so targeted in order for this to happen. Like it feels, yeah, like I said, like it's a trap to play this. It's a trap to build around it because nine times out of 10, your opponent's going to see you coming. It is. Uh, I like to think of Galactus as like the Grixis of the Marvel snap where it's like, there are certain types of people who are gonna play it mm -hmm. no matter what people who just like love when their opponents are sad. And yeah. they get to have all the fun. Right. And like that is that is what this this card is about for sure. Okay. Yeah. This feels this feels very like, oh sick, I'm playing Galactus and I'm gonna beat him because I got the and then it's like, no. Literally yeah. just play a card in each zone and all of a sudden you're not in such a great spot. It's pretty it's pretty difficult to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Meet Hella. Ah. Well, this is in her On this reveal? is in, this is in her final form with pointy teeth and big eyes. I love it. All right. Yeah, I, I, this is the variant I typically use, but the honest reason why I'm not using the, uh, the, like the base variant for this is, uh, is because I felt like the border would be like misleading. Okay. Like, this is the base one. So okay. I was like, I'll just use one that has the same border as the, as rest, the rest of them. Of them. Okay. I just didn't want, I didn't want to like give you a signal either way. So That's I was fair. just like, all right, I'll do that. Okay. Can I get a explanation of resurrect? Yeah, everything you discarded, it comes back. What? Okay, if, our, if my deck is 12 cards and I have 12 spots, why am I discarding? How am I discarding? Well, you play a card that discards something big. Okay. And then you play another card that discards something big. Okay. And then you play her and you get some big stuff. For so this is a very, uh, uh, once again, you're building very much around her to launch I, you probably don't have to but if you yeah. want well, to I mean, do like, anything reasonable right i was gonna say like if you really want it to have some heat like you would make it where your strategy is that large things have reasons to be elsewhere right. and here's your 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 final finisher of playing out hella mm -hmm. everything else comes back and you hope that it gets allocated in a way that's favorable to you because right random. because it is fully random Correct. where those cards get resurrected now 
that being said, we talked about our friend Agatha being dog shit with the whole uh, dice yep. rolling of where things go, which leads me yep. to believe that maybe the 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 hand of of dice rolling is not super hot for Marvel Snap. I mean, it's it's about as hot as dice rolling is with dice. OK, right? OK. I mean, <laughs> it's, listen, yeah. the, the complaint of the shuffler is always fresh in my mind. Oh, so, dude, you have no idea. You have no idea. There are there are, activated like, something I, within you when I said those words. First of all, I I'm very familiar with like the thread on the magic forums. It's like eighty thousand posts complaining about the shuffler. It's the shuffler greatest thing. Got me, oh god! It rocks. I love Dude, it. Dude, I kind of want to make. Like, I should make an arena shuffler costume for myself and show up to <laughs> cons. <laughs> one of uh one of the streams I used to watch in Magic had a command where you'd go exclamation point shuffle. Oh, yeah. It would take a random post from that <laughs> thread and just yeah, it's like every time you did it, it rocks. I love shuffler truthers and they exist in this game. They're more like matchmaking truthers. No, it's, it's like funny. So like for the for the longest time, like people would get mad about the RC with stuff or like, oh no, it was the Magic Ambassador program. And so we started like, you know, going back at people about how everything was our fault. Like, yeah. We're the shuffler too. It's us. <laughs> yeah. I personally, I, I personally am the one that put that basic land on top, and you lost that match. That was me. Use my name. Yep. That, that's how it works, right? Like every time anything goes bad, it very obviously cannot be my fault. Of course, it has to be the fault of some external force conspiring against me in a nebulous way. And by the way, every the external only... force is conspiring against me because I can <laughs> obviously do no wrong. Naturally, correct. That's exactly true. And as someone who is personal that is exactly development true and growth, her, what are you talking about? Don't know her. That's not real. That's fake. I. That's not a thing. I've never heard of it. <laughs> okay. All of that said. All of that said. Thumbs up or Ella. thumbs down. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how common discard is. I don't know if I can trust random here. I know how I roll dice. I can't trust me. So I don't know why I'm telling my phone it should be okay to do this. Well, maybe your phone is better than. Uh, Oh, it's not because it's piloted by an idiot, which is still me. Um, right. But if you're dumb, then maybe random is better than you. I don't know <laughs> oh, if that's true. <laughs> oh, I can't. I I wouldn't bet my life on it. I'm not sure. Uh, God. See, the only thing here that makes me want to meta this call is that you have a lot of variants for it. That's like pretty. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's pretty much meaningless. You I know open you open variants, variants for free. Uh, yeah, yeah. So of these, I think you've opened I would be her honest, a bit. I I bought this one. Okay, but I bought this one. Let's be real. I bought this one because it kind of looks like she has a dom. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the actual. If we're gonna be real, that's <sighs> why I bought this one. She does have a powerful dong in this. That's true. Yeah, she definitely like that. That's why I bought it. Too powerful for gender. We love it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, man. Six for six in a resurrect all cards. You want to throw random locations. That feels so coin flippy. Yes. Like you got to know you've got big hosses and everything's close enough that it doesn't matter where it goes. It feels like this card is super fun to win with but you actually have to play really well for it to work. I'm going to, I'm going to give that one a thumbs up. Um, I think that if anything, it's underrating her because okay. again, right I, now, I don't know the discard thing. I don't know how frequent that correct. is, what you can do with it. Like I'm just, uh, this you is, have, this is all I get. More or less correctly identified the dynamics, okay. which is like, this is a card that is, going to the it puts the casino in your casino so you can gamble while you gamble right Got like it. this okay. is a card that is like you are definitely giving up some games to rng here but what you're trying to do is put yourself in favorable situations snap in those favorable situations and win big oh. when you win so this is like one of the cards where the snap mechanic actually does matter generally the way you i would think about hella is you 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 put it in a deck you put like a bunch of big stuff in the deck you put some things that discard stuff in the deck you discard like three of those big things right. and you're probably good. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, you can get unlucky and it can go to the wrong spot, but like, yeah, you're probably. But I mean, that's like I'm saying, like, if you're if you're playing this and you're playing it with strategy brain instead of this is gonna be fucking sick, man, you could <laughs> you could totally make this work that the stuff that you're putting to the side is going to net benefit basically anywhere it ends up or that Correct. you're going to have an even enough application that it's more likely than not this is going to win this is going to this is going to get you there. Yep. More likely than not is pretty much the name of the game with this card. It's the more likely than not card. Like there I, I like it playing it with it and against it is very much just like all right, what if they discarded? What if that one goes there and that one goes there? What is if this, that one goes there and that one goes there? Like is discard something that's often happening often enough that like discarding a bunch of stuff is telegraphing hella oh yeah okay oh yeah okay. like if you if you play a discard card into like a really big guy everyone knows what's up it's extremely apparent when you're playing a hella deck okay the weird thing about hella though is that it sort of tricks people into staying because it's random, right? What if you get lucky? Right. And so, like, it, when you play this deck, you think it's like you're going to the casino. But what's actually happening is your opponent is going to the casino, and they have to feel like, oh, do I feel lucky right now? All right, last one, the most text on any card in the game, Thanos. What's an infinity start... stone? Oh, don't worry, I'll show okay. you. At the start of the game, you shuffle the six infinity stones into your deck. These are the stones. You have the space stone oh, I hate on reveal. Okay. Next turn, you can move one card to this location and draw. Okay. Transform this location into a new one and draw. So it's like, okay, you have a location that sucks. You get rid of it. You draw a card. Draw a card and give it minus one cost. Draw two one cost cards from your deck. Notably, the stones are all one. If you've played all the stones, Thanos gets plus 10 power, so he becomes a 620. And uh, enemy cards here have negative one power. So those are the six infinity stones. You shuffle them into your deck, so you're effectively playing with 18 cards rather than typical 12. Okay. And in exchange, you get, like, relatively under-costed abilities, and some of them draw cards. Hmm. And then he's just a 6'10". So you have to... So you don't get any bonuses. He's just a big guy at the end. Okay. You just get the abilities of the stones. Pretty much. Interesting. Because now you have a bunch of cards that are small. They only have one power. They don't, like, disappear from Elaine, and you still have to play them out in one. Yes, but I should let you know, like, I'll just give this one to you, at least like this context where it's like, there are very few cards in the game. Marvel snap that say, draw a card. Okay. So this is an attempt to like alleviate the extra cards in your deck by balancing them out. By, by saying letting they also actually... say, draw a card. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Just because, so like in this instance, you can end the game with a deck bigger than your 12 spaces. So you may have oh, like, yeah. cards left over. Okay. I, I would say in most Marvel Snap games, the board is not filled up. Okay. So is it because like people, is it from losing stuff like over that? I mean, we know that no. Shang-Chi is the no, removal just, part. No, but... it's just like your energy, right? Okay. Like you, you're playing a, a one, like even if you're just playing like your basic like vanilla curve, a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six that's still only using six of the usable 12 spots. Like the, the bigger cards are still only taking up one spot, just bigger. Can I see the stones again? Sure. Uh, tell me when to flip uh, to the next one. Okay. Got it. So they all draw a card. Nah, four of them do. Okay. So these four. And well, well, I guess three of them do, and this one draws two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just to have a card draw. Okay. Yeah. So this one has no card draw, and uh, this one has no card. Draw. So if you can do all your draw bullshit and actually play all these fools out, you have a 620. Mm -hmm. That seems large. <clears throat> it's a pretty big guy. 
you can move things with an ability on one of the stones. You can give enemies minus stuff, making that more effective. Hmm. Oh, this feels really glass cannon. Like the utility of the stones is good. But I mean, I, mm, how often do you actually get to play them all out so you can use Thanos? I would say the majority of Thanos games do not involve a 620. Okay. Like the significant majority. So I mean, then in, in that case, like a Hulk is more powerful than Thanos. Yeah, most of the time. So this is really trying, it, this feels like it's more for the stones than it is for Thanos. And it's being able to have the card draw options and the other ancillary benefits to make the other stuff you're running have more of an impact or to get to it faster or to have access to it sooner than you might just by the like regular scope of turns, which I don't know how exactly they work. We do love options. We always love card draw because that lets us use the options. But this almost... Mm. It kind of feels like a trap again, if I'm really honest. Um, the Thanos part. Like, I can see the stones being extremely useful and having good utility, and that lets you do other stuff. Like, I feel like... The entire reason to play him is for the stones. It's not to try to get to the 620 and it's not to try to like necessarily win with him. It's to make your other stuff more useful and take your opponent back with like, especially the whichever one gives them minus. It lets you have the option to move something. So maybe you don't have our uh, Jeff, but you can treat something like Jeff. Um, God, it, Ugh. it feels like uh, I, I still think this feels like a trap I would be scared to run it because I feel like I wouldn't get the stuff I was looking for because instead I was drawing stones oh my god you were so on it until the end of that no, this is, is it, the best is card in the game okay, I don't know this is the best card in the entire game he is the, the, the absolute dominant meta deck right now. What? And it is entirely because of what you said. Yeah. The stones, they're really good. Yeah, that's Those the are thing. really good cards. I think that's the thing is like the stones are the part, like he's the trash. It's the stone. Yeah, he sucks. Want. Okay. Yes. He, he, he that's like, kind of, I, I feel like, like that's, that was the rub is just like, okay, well I'm paying six. Hmm. I have to, so, I mean, that's the other thing. He's six. So how the hell are you supposed to yeah. use all the stones anyway? You just don't play him. The stones, like you, like you, most you Thanos just decks did, basically, you, just, you can just yeah. fucking draft chap this asshole, but you just want, you well, want the rocks. you don't really draft chap. No, I know. But I just mean like, him, if you don't like, play him, nobody's yeah. crying. You, you want the rocks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want the rocks. The rocks are what they're there for. Like this card specifically. So it's, you, you just basically build whatever you want and you put Thanos in here to get this stuff. Yeah. Okay. He's, uh, so he's like, this not, card specifically really is like the, the best turn one play. He's there. not the build. Correct. He's you there, build whatever the you want and you just like you would at a middle school dance. You leave room for Jesus. You're leaving an 11th. You leave a you leave a card slot open for Thanos. Yeah. And like over time, the, the decks have gotten like very advanced in terms of how to use and abuse what this guy does, what the stones do as best as possible. Got it. So like we're we're in a metagame right now that's very dominated by this guy. But like he's probably been the card that is the best card in the game more than any other card. Like he goes in and sure. out. But when he's in, he's like the guy. Because I mean, it's it also uh, knowing what little I do about Marvel things and that he's the big bad. That's why mm -hmm. it almost feels like it's kind of a deception to have him like the actual best thing when it's just like, oh, he's the most powerful, especially after our Captain America fiasco of yes. him being dog <laughs> So it's just like, is no, this a trick? Like, people get mad Are about playing it. With people get here? people get mad about it. Okay, that makes sense. It makes it makes you sense why they him. work. And I think I just kept having it in my head that like you didn't get the stones until you dealt until you had him somewhere but it's literally just running it in the deck means you get yeah. these which means you get these as an option at t1 which is stupid yes like the like, play uh turn one draw two cards 
is bananas. unprecedentedly good. Okay. Like there's nothing close to it. I mean, it's kind of always bananas, right? Uh, I would imagine there's like formats in Magic where it's not busted. Like, is that a good play in Vintage or whatever? I don't know. I don't know. I don't play vintage. I don't. Well, have I mean, it's it's paying like, it's paying less than the benefit is, and that's always good, right? Yeah, like it, it's just like straight up. Most of these stones are better than what they cost, and also you can build the deck in such a way that it maximizes them even okay. more. And even if you're not playing him, which you mostly aren't, these tend to be the, at least right now for the past probably since December, the best deck in the game. Thanos. Period. Okay, I I see why. Yeah. He's trash. Uh, his his the them jewels. That's yeah. that's the good shit. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's that's actually gonna be it from for me okay. at least. I've got no more. I've got no more for you. I I that is an incredible one to end it on. Please make sure to shout yourself out. Where can everyone find you? Uh, not that you want to, but you can. Uh, <laughs> you do. At Go Bear Hicks, my last name on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I don't know why I'm still on Twitter, but I, I, it's, you know, it's part of the journey of getting to this position in the first place. So I just still have it. Uh, and then on YouTube, I have two Commander gameplay channels. I do Elder Dragon Hijinx, which is mostly webcam, but we also do some live games with Ailey. Um, alias V is her at, and then I also have commander at home with my partner, Brian Kibler and magic luminaries and friends and people that play magic that we like and welcome into our house. So that's where you can find me. Um, yeah, that I, I play a lot of magic. I do, uh, I'm on the commander rules committee, which doesn't mean I'm good at rules. <laughs> it means I'm good at other things, but I help shape that format. Um, but I'm not like writing comprehensive rules i am actually working on that though so i can be more useful there so yeah that's where to find me thank you so much chat remember uh, viewers chat i'm not sure how to address youtube people anyway please do remember to follow her she did phenomenally on some of these oh, God. making a face again it's i like, know oh, i no. am oh, it's, it's just no don't send praise this way i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was really, you did really good. It was like, there were like the Hobgoblin one was great. I, I do think that you kind of, you kind of tricked me into revealing some stuff about Thanos. You did, the, you did the testing thing, right? Like where it's like, you asked the questions and I answered them and you extrapolated from the you answers. You can only, and, like, and that's it. So there it is. So you got to learn here too, that yeah. you don't have to answer anything. I am <laughs> usually comfortable giving people the answers they ask for because it means they're engaged with what's going on. So it's like, yeah, I'm fine to answer some of that. But I definitely felt like on the Thanos one, it was like, I gave you that one, didn't I? I told you that he's smaller than a Hulk. I answered that question. You did. I, I shouldn't have answered that one. Yeah. Well, I, I don't it. I don't necessarily think that would have made much of a difference in the assessment. It was more one of those like seeing that he gets to 20. It's just like, OK, well, he's not getting played because he's the big hoss. It's just yes. because you get everything else. And he's also extremely powerful, which makes it additionally worthwhile. But really, the his power isn't the draw. It's the other shit he's bringing right. to the table. And that's why I mentioned Hulk being larger. So it's not necessarily yeah. like this is the apex of power here. And that it's still, you know, something that can be beat with other cards. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for your time. My absolute I really pleasure. Appreciate it. Also, everybody, I'm still not going to play Marvel Snaps. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely keep track of magic, honestly. 